Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today uh, with Dan Zangroni, uh, directly from Cantanzaro, Calabria. So, welcome, Dan. Thanks for being here. Oh, I'm very happy to be here, Bob. I've been I've been watching some of your podcasts, and it's it's something that I've been involved with for a few years now. So, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh no, it's my pleasure. I wish I was sitting next to you in Calabria right now. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is, and and the and the uh, and the food is a lot better there too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it can be. <laughs> so, so a little bit before we get into why you're in Calabria right now, a little bit about your family background, where they're from, and and what sure. started you on your journey. In the genealogy, sure. Um, well, full-blooded uh, Italian American. <laughs> um, I was born in a. Um, medium-sized city in upstate New York. It's called Utica. And um, the, the town gets its name from Tunisia, actually, in Africa. Um, it's right near Syracuse, central, central New York. So I grew up there in a totally um, Italian uh, culture, basically. Um, I, I attended public schools, so I also had a typical American, um, you know, interaction with children my age, which were, whether they were African American or Jewish or English or Irish, and but a lot, some first generation, some older generation, of course. But um, I had a you know a lot of different um, background of children that I grew up with as, as far as attending school. But if my home life, of course, was full of the Italian background. Uh, my grandmother uh, came over <laughs> in her mother's womb <laughs> in the boat, um, and about. I mean, in 1908, 1905. Um, but uh, so, you know, we had the traditional foods and, um, the tr and a lot of the dialect, all Calabrian. Um, and slowly and more recently, um, I began to realize there was a very large connection to, to the city. I'm in Cropany in Cantanzaro, Calabria. Um, because a lot of people would follow cousins and friends to the cities in America when they got there. So many, many from Cropany ended up in Utica. And of course, they started their families there. They had gone there sometimes when they were only teenagers, found a wife, of course. She was from Cropany, too. <laughs> so I, and there, was, there was dialect um, being spoken around the house. Um, but again, you know, it, it wasn't for us to learn. You know, my parents were first generation, you know, um, well, actually more se second generation uh, Italian Americans and, you know, very proud to be in this America that, you know, <laughs> what a chicken in every pot, you know, it was, it was the 50s and everyone, you know, was going to get a house in the backyard and it was just a, a great time. Streets were safe for kids and all that. Um, so I didn't learn the language. It was cool because of that. But um, slowly as I got older, you know, my family got older and I had some time, my, my kids were launched. I had some time on my hands. I started researching it. My mom is still going strong at 91. And I started to research. I met a cousin who became a retired military. Um, she, first cousin, she um, really got into genealogy. She became certified genealogist over in Texas. Um, she's retired military, but she really was digging up everything on our family name on my father's side. So that got me interested on my mother's side. <laughs> um, we visited Italy. We brought my mom, um, me and my girlfriend, we brought my mom to um, Italy in 2016. And um, my fiance really said, you should go down to, let's go down to Calabria, you know, because my mom was all about, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go to Rome and we'll, we'll go to Florence, maybe uh, Tuscany, you know. Uh, but yeah, my fiance was like, you should go down to Calabria. You've got family down there, don't you? And my mom was like, oh, they left for Torino a long time ago because there was never work there. And she knew of them and she had visited them in the 70s, but up in Torino, way up north, where you hear everybody went because there was a Fiat factory and there was work, you know. <laughs> Um, so anyways, when we got down here, you know, and we had called a cousin in Pennsylvania and, oh, yeah, no, connect with so-and-so and this and that. And sure enough, we were greeted by, you know, distant cousins and other family. Um, and we just had a wonderful time. And then we realized we should have put that on the list first because we only had like three days. 
Um, but we really fell in love with the place. And uh, then, of course, realized this is where my mother's uh, grandmother was from and her grandfather. And so it really struck a, struck a chord, you know. And uh, so my fiance and, fiance and myself, Nancy, um, we got invited back the next year uh, from some of the family that we had met. I said, oh, my son's getting married. No, you should come, come to the wedding, you know. So we did, and we, we, we got a, uh, an Airbnb, you know, we got a B&B. But then we started looking, oh, these properties, you know, these are kind of nice. And, yeah. and again, uh, Nancy just was like, I, I love this place. We should do this. So we started buying a property, you know, and, uh, and we had some help because um, one of the distant relatives is a lawyer and helped us with the purchasing of the property. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just fabulous. I, you, you know, we came back with the same thing. We, we were back, I don't think we were back a day. And we were walking down the street. And we live <laughs> in a very quiet place in New Jersey, Bradley Beach. And especially in the winter, it's, there's nobody here. The summer people go home and everything. But we were walking down the street. And my wife says, I can't believe we're back here. And we're not there anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and she says, I wish we were there. I says, be careful of what you ask for. I said, we may. <laughs> I said I'm ready yeah. to go. I'll pack up everything and go. <laughs> well, I know it seems that way. Um, because once you do it a few times, the, the, the flight really isn't that bad. And then you realize well, it's not that hard to get there. I mean, you pay more to go to California from the East Coast. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and the, and the flights nowadays are, are you know, kind of, they're you know financially feasible and they're quick and they're pretty comfortable so you you know before you know you, you can get here pretty easy so so um I'm, i you know i know a lot of people can be interested in this so how did you um how did you find the place did you get a real estate did you just go traveling around um, town or? well again fortunate because we had um some family that knew somebody who was um planning they knew that they had moved away north and they had a place. Now I have two places, <laughs> but so the first place we bought, um, they knew that they kind of wanted to get rid of it. It's um, it's kind of a beach house down by the sea. Um, so we investigated that, and they and they were sure enough. They were like, "Yeah, no, we've been trying to sell it." So what was exciting, and we realized, is that um, there are a lot of places to sell here, but these are they're also very sleepy little towns that you know. The tourists don't really even come down to Calabria. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's all mostly ag agriculture. And so there's not a lot of people coming here. Um, it's rare for anybody to say they went there to see the sites. <laughs> Although I, I love <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, the sites. are unbelievable there. Yeah, because it's all ancient. Um, yeah. And it's open and it's more like archaeological parks. And, um, everything is more open air type of stuff. The, the national park and um, it's a more natural um, environment. You could walking on trails and uh, the old, you know, the rocks and the waterfalls and uh, and of course the sea. The, the, the beaches are beautiful over here. Um, yeah. Nice sandy. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, we 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 went for it. And it's a small place. It's just it's really you know you are at the beach all day. You go there. You got your bedroom and <laughs> you got your bathroom and you got a little sitting room with a kind of a galley kitchen. So we, we got that, yeah, first. <laughs> um, right, and so now the second place, I, you're, you're renovating the second place, correct? Yeah, that's where I am now. Um, you can probably tell it's a little equity because we don't have all the furniture in it. I don't, you can hear me okay though, right? I mean, uh, no, no, you sound good. You sound like, you know, okay. we have a little reverb on your voice, so it sounds really good. <laughs> oh, it's better, okay. Yes, <laughs> not all the furniture's in. We're waiting for the kitchen um, uh, to come in. But it's a great place. Um, it's uh, it overlooks um, the uh, Casalino uh, Plaza here, um, which you know is kind of a public square. But because it's such a sleepy little town, not much happens down there. But it's nice. It's open. Um, there's like seven churches in the area, um, and we started about a year ago to really um, work on it. Um, there happens to be a small apartment attached to it that we now will, will we have the air, the one down by the, the sea listed as an Airbnb. Um, the other one is not, well, we're just finishing it. Um, actually, my son is in town. Uh, he's down by the sea right now. 
And so, you know, he was in there. And then we have like a main house that has um, bigger rooms as the sojourner, like the living room with a, an attached uh, bathroom and a large kitchen. And we have a terrace and we can go up to the rooftop and we have a balcony out front and we have a couple large bedrooms. Um, so it, it's, a, it, it's a lot, but, it, but it's, you know, it's, it's built to last a thousand years. So yeah, um, yeah. it's structurally sound. There's, yeah, there's not, no problems there. <laughs> it was just uh, upgrading it, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, so to that point, the, doing the doing the work and upgrading is um, the, the two questions. Really, is one uh, compared to the states, is it expensive? And two, are you able to find the the, the workers to do it? Yeah. Um, yes, I found the workers here. Um, I'm lucky too, though. I was brought up in the construction industry. Uh, my grandfather and my father and my brother and my brother-in-law. <laughs> Um, we had a family business um, in electrical field, electrical contracting, and then I developed that more and I got into building and I got licensed as a builder and throughout my career and as a building inspector. So I, I know construction and I know project management, um, but I was lucky enough, it was a cute little story, <laughs> that when I did start the job, I was kind of wondering, how am I going to get this done? <laughs> I was out on the balcony and sure enough, there was a guy down there in the plaza and he said, are you the American that bought that? And I'm like, yeah, he spoke a little English. Come to find out he lived in America for a few years, Antonio. And um, I said, and then he was right away, he was kind of like, well, if you need any help. And I'm like, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> and luck, I mean, he's a godsend, really. He had all the tools, <laughs> he, you know, and he helped him with, with the, um, the way things are done here. You know, because I was trying to kind of insert my experience, but it hadn't been in Europe and it hadn't been working on the homes that were built to last 500 years. Um, so there was a little bit of a learning curve, but, you know, the, the principles are the same, uh, although the electricity, of course, is 220 mm -hmm. volts instead of our usual. And, and I was interested. It was kind of surprised to find out all my equipment, you know, whether it was my plumbing, kitchen faucets and cabinets and even my tools I was buying, screwdrivers, so much, it's all made in Italy. I mean, they make so really? much stuff here, all my wow. electrical equipment, yeah. All my heating and air conditioning. I mean, some of it may be assembled, you know, like a lot of places in China or something, but a lot of Italian goods. And I, you know, and slowly um, Antonio, of course, helped me connect with um, the hardware store people and other tradesmen around. We needed, you know, some special doors. Um, we needed, uh, we wanted to customize a door. We have a kind of a sliding glass door that we decided to put in and we etched, we etched the glass. We had some nice features. Um, but uh, the expense, I would, I would say, no, I would say it's less. <laughs> It's definitely less. Yeah, well, I would think I would think certainly the the labor costs are, are less, and yeah. uh, you know what's what's um, what's really amazing about you know Italy. We stayed in a, a B and B in Naples, and um, yeah. in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, interviewing Christina next week because she's right on the Spacca di Napoli, which is you know that the, the, the ancient street that splits Naples, and. Um, yeah. You, you know, you go in through this gate and you see these walls and the stairs that people have been yeah. walking on for 800 years or God knows how long. And then sure, you get into yeah. the apartment and it's <laughs> washing yeah. machine, dishwasher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, and I, I said that the other day. I was giving my son a ride through the little villages and I said, you wouldn't know it, but this is where we got our glass etched. And we went into that guy's little shop you know, in the in the back of the house, but he had a machine in there that was, you know, as big as a room, ten foot by twelve feet or something, where he puts the glass on the machine, he plugs it into the computer, he puts any design on the computer, and the the electronic arm etches the glass. So you know, I mean, like you said, hiding behind this facade of uh, ancient ruins, a lot of stuff is modernized, which is really cool. That was one of the, you know, the most amazing things is is going into, you know, some of these places and from the outside, yeah. it's like, ooh. and then you get inside and, and everything's modern. And as we were talking yeah. uh, before, 
that's one of my family's ancient homes behind me. And unfortunately, yeah. it's in total disrepair. And, and Yeah, you see a lot of that. Yeah. Uh it's it's sad because it could be such a it should be such a, a fabulous place. But when we yeah. were in um I don't remember if it was Montebello or Fasado. Um and um we had the tour done with, with Letizia Sinisi from Italy Rooting. And we were standing in the, the uh piazza and uh she was talking to one of the people from there and she said oh he has a home for you that he says he'll refurbish for you i said what do you what do you mean and she says he's not kidding and we've been in t we've been in contact and he really wants to give me this house <laughs> up, <laughs> up in the mountains of uh of calabria um yeah. And, uh, you know, he sent me some photos and I said, I, I said, I don't know if I could take a house from you. I said, but maybe we could think of yeah. a way to fix it up or, or, um, uh, do something where we get people to go because yeah, what was, what's really, really sad is like you mentioned some of these small towns, uh, yeah. we were standing just before we left, we were standing in the piazza and, um, the whole street was just empty. Yeah. And there was still furniture in the places. And I, oh, and yeah, I asked, sure. I said, what's, you know, what gives? And they said, most of them are still owned by somebody. Yeah, They live in Switzerland, Germany, Northern Italy. And yeah. they just, they just have the stuff, but they don't do anything with it. They and, keep it. Yeah. Well, the wonderful, the wonderful thing about that situation, which is, which is not uncommon, is here in Kropany, they have kept those homes. And they, you know, they've kept them up. Some really kept them up well. And they did. They moved and they had to work in Switzerland. They had to work in France. They had to work in Germany. But they never gave up the home. But here they love to come back to it because we're so close to the sea. Mm. So when they come back for their vacation, you know, the August time, they, it's, they've got their sea. You know, they've got their beach. And, and they just enjoy the beach and they'll come here and they'll get up in the morning and they'll go down to the beach. Because again, we have Cropany here in the hill and what they call Cropany border, Cropany Superiore. And you go down to Cropany Marina, which is a little bit of a misnomer. There's, there's no marina there. <laughs> there's no, boats do not pull into there, but you know, it's because it's near the sea. Of yeah, and that's where you're going to find, I mean, wonderful restaurants, of course, but you're going to find your supermarkets. You're going to find, um, oh, kind of your hardware stores. Um, some of the, um, you know, the stores um, that mine have everything from clothes to light bulbs to party favors. So, and, 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 and fashion too, there's clothing stores, there's jewelry stores, there's, and your medical, there's dentists, the dentists are down there. And you're, and what's wonderful is they just two years ago, they finally finished, took them probably about five years. <laughs> um, they finished the road because they used to come up the switchback all the way up mm -hmm. the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Now they were able to straighten the whole thing out. So I'm, I get in my car, I'm down there in 10 minutes. You know? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very nice. Because the other towns that are around, they still have the windy road. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and, why, that's the way it was going into uh, yeah. Posado and Montebello. I mean, those roads. And, yeah. and you know, you're going, you're going up that yeah. this road and you're thinking <laughs> to yourself, my God, how did these people do this a hundred years ago? donkey <laughs> i know i know but you know they they you know you know like my grandmother's family they they you know they lived in yeah. naples and they would go there once or twice a year uh and it was a hike from naples to get there by train oh, and car mean, and people that actually people that actually had the um the, the, yeah, they had the money to do that. They had the ability, know. but there was there was no car. <laughs> no, yeah. no, there was, they, there was they the, the wheel. <laughs> there was the wheel. <laughs> so, so you know, so you know, since we came back, my wife and I have kind of been looking around and thinking, should we? Could we? You know, obviously we would, we have to go back again and look. Uh, and I have, yeah. um, I have cousins in uh, um, Toronto uh, also uh, that that i haven't met yet but i said well maybe we'll go there okay and yeah look and pull you also but um yeah you know what kind of advice well before we get to the advice um what are the what are the prices like and especially now because the euro is almost one for one right yeah um i think square meter if i remember right it's about 400 euro i think 
square meter. Um, and that's really for something you can walk into and yeah. start, start sleeping in. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I furnish it, of course, but not like some of the other ones where um, you might pay 50,000, um, but you know, you, you might have to put another 50 in. Um, Which still isn't, that's no, that's not, no, that's because not well, but yeah, oh no, I know. And what you're getting for 50 usually is, you know, possibly two apartments, you know. Um, really? A large, ah. very large house. Yeah, with a lot of room and possibly a, 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 a what they call a magazine, which is the very bottom floor. You can kind of sell something. It's like almost like it's a little bit of a commercial. Space. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some places like that. Yeah. So that's what, so I didn't even know what that meant. So that's what that means. Yeah. They call it a magazine. Um, which of course we use it in military terms, I think. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, you will see, like, like here in my village, there will be a woman who she lives upstairs, and you can go over to her and you can call her upstairs, and she'll come downstairs. And she, and she opens it up; it's like a garage door, and she has all her cheeses in there, and all the cheese, the fresh cheeses that she makes, and you know some marmalades and jams and stuff. Um, so there, there's you, you get that sometimes with, and you know you could really put a car in. There. So it's kind of a garage too. Um, so th that's about that's an average price, I would say. But it goes both ways. It's, it's you know, um, are you are you looking for something that you don't want to work on, or just you know, paint and, and, and furnish, or you really want to you really want something that you're going to have to hire some contractors for, you know? Right, right. Well, we'll have to look. We'll have to look around there, and this way uh, that we could hire you to be the. Uh... The Ovis, what, what the general contractor? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually I'm pretty excited these days because um, it is getting busier. We had a we had a, a young couple come. Uh, well, I mean they're 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 just starting their empty nest. <laughs> their lap their their lap, their youngest child is leaving high school. You know, I guess this is the last year, so they're thinking. But we weren't actually in here in town we were somewhere else but we were in italy but we just weren't happened to be here but she came to this town because as a young girl she lives in chicago area um she came to this town this time around um her, her vacation time because she remembered as a um younger girl her grandmother was from here mm. so she came here as a young girl so she started thinking about buying here same reason me i mean I'm really glad that I'm here because it, it, there's so much more of an impact in a way yeah. when you're kind of where your grandparents left from. So you're kind of like completing a bit of a circle. Um, so anyways, we continued our, uh, she happened to talk to the butcher that's just down below here. And he said, you know, well, you know, there's an American couple, blah, 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 that they bought up here. And she was like, really? Oh. So she ended up getting in touch with me through you know, the social media. And we've been in contact the last month. So I did a PowerPoint. I went through the whole building that she wanted to look at and I sent it to her. We've done everything through online. I did an inspection on all the systems, whether it's what she's going to need this or that and the heating and the electric and the plumbing and the, the cistern. You know, sometimes the water gets turned off here for, you know, in, at nighttime, you, you need your little cistern that holds the extra water for a nighttime shower or something. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you end up learning while you're here, of course, yeah, and how I they bet. should be done. So, you know, I, I did, you know, an inspection for her and some recommendations. And so we're on the trail for that to, you know, purchase that property for them with, with the help of, um, you know, the contract and um, we have the lawyers here. Um, and I got, then I got a call because I am going to Sicily tomorrow for a few days. I'm headed back to New York, actually, but, um, you know, a friend of mine said, "Oh, I got somebody who's, you know, and I'm going to be going through Taormina. Did you go to? Did you go to? No, Messina no. We, by yeah, well, we went to Messina by ferry, but then we didn't go to Taormina. We went. Um, okay. We went to Cefalu and um, Palermo because. Uh, oh yeah. My, okay. my wife's uh, family is from Shaka, so we. we you know, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to be going through Shaka too. Ah, yeah, really I beautiful place. I like Shaka. We yeah. found a, we found a wonderful restaurant in Shaka called Buona Forchetta. I don't know if you got that one, but uh, I don't put that one on your list. That. I would have to put that on the list. I, I mean, our favorite, one. our favorite place of every place that we did, other than you know yeah. the places where we went, where the family was, of course. But Sheila was just 
Oh yeah, 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 ah. yeah. I like that place too. Yeah, what it's an amazing the, place. It's got the castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just so many wonderful things to do and places to see. And so, and you know, what always rings in my head is what a very popular saying here was piano, piano. Just take it easy. You know, you'll you'll get everything in. Don't worry about it. Stop trying to it. You know, don't worry about it. You know, and it's it's a Calabrian thing mostly because the you know they work so close with nature with the earth yeah and yeah. um they know and especially you know some of the people that i know i'm close with some some family and some friends that have the olive oil i mean to understand the olive oil to understand the olive tree i mean it's almost um mystical i mean it's just the way it works with nature and it's been around for thousands of years and, and how oil was just this commodity that was you know well really uh um, life preserving you know well it was almost um, like it was almost to, like yeah. it was almost like salt in a way yeah. it was like money there yeah. oh 200, absolutely 300 years ago absolutely yeah well and also don't forget it was light too they would use it in, to burn and mm. they would use it on their skin and the health aspects they knew they knew there was so much good to it and the tree is so beautiful the way it turns its leaves during the during the seasons and the days, it's a silver side and a green side, and there's just an intelligence in the trees. It's, it's really interesting, um, and you're just surrounded by them here. Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, the, one of the best meals that we had was outside the palazzo. There, they had a whole thing set up for us, and uh, you know, to your point, everything, yeah. nothing was bought. Everything. I mean, the the the, <laughs> right, you know, yeah. the, the, the capicola was. You know, I tasted it. Yeah. And I said, I've never tasted. You know, we don't have yeah. stuff like this in America. And they said, oh, we still make yeah. it the way we did 200 years ago. You know, we yeah. kill the pig on the day after Christmas. And uh, yeah. and the cheese was all made there. And the olive oil was, they gave yeah. us a big thing of olive oil to take home. That, like you said, it's almost like liquid gold. Yeah, yeah. They, um, I mean, we, yeah, because we're processing so much in America. You know, everything gets processed so much that I, that's where it gets lost you know there's not a lot of processing to it they try to keep it done by hand um all most of the people that i know they just finished all their spaghetti sauce they got you know 25 mm -hmm. jars they, they put all the tomatoes in the thing with it being, being, there's three you know they have to take a full weekend everybody you know passes the jars and then pours them in and then it's like a fire brigade you know and now the sauce is ready for the winter you know and the mushrooms, wow, you know, we're right near the bottom of what they call the Sila, which is the national park. And the mushroom, you know, they just know, oh, it rained yesterday, two days we're going up to the Sila, and the mushrooms are out. Very controlled, too. The food is very controlled, um, as well as the the Sila I found interesting, because you have to have, of course, like a fishing license, you need a mushroom license, you know. Really? Uh. And don't get caught, you know, it's <laughs> 200 euros bang or something, you know. Um, but you have to have a certain basket for the mushrooms because the basket is woven, you know, a typical mm -hmm. basket. And the spores will fall through the basket, stay in the forest. You know, they catch you with a plastic bag. They catch really? you with some, another yeah. five. Ah, that's yeah, you're picking, so you're picking interesting. mushrooms, you're shaking them off, you're leaving the spore, you know. You got to, you know, so you want to, you know, there's just a lot of tradition, like you said, for hundreds and hundreds of years, it's the way it's done. Because um, it's just, it's what they call the old country. <laughs> yeah, well, they, you know, they obviously know what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I got that sense. And, you know, and that's why I tell people it's, you know, we, the first, our first trip to Italy, we went to Rome and Sorrento. My son was a baby and, you know, we just yeah. spent a week in Sorrento. And this trip, you know, we kind of, so a whole different side of Italy and, and yeah, sure. You know, uh, I tell people, you know, if you've never been to Rome, you have to been, to, you have to go to Rome as a boss. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, you know, if we spend any more time there, like lengthy time, you know, maybe we'll go to Florence. But I, I said to everybody, if you know where your people are from, it's a completely different experience. Uh, <laughs> there's this. Yeah. Did, It'll choke I, you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. My wife kept saying, "Me, don't cry here," you know. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true though. It's it, it's emotional, and, and I think that's the way it's meant to be. You know, um, you know. Well, I, 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 you know, I'm a firm believer that, that nothing happens by accident, and uh, sure, you know, there's a there's a you get this sense that the 
that the people who are no longer with us somehow are watching over and know that you're there. Uh, it's hard to explain, but you get yeah, that. Yeah, okay. That feeling. I, I, I hear you. Yeah, well, it, it's it's exciting here in Kropany, uh, and, and well as Calabria. I mean, you know, just made Times list of one of the best places um, because, it, and, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried it's going to get discovered. Too much, yeah, yeah. But when, when you fly into La Metia Airport, um, or, you know, and right around the corner is the Stazione if you come in by train, but there's a very large LED screen up by the airport. And, and, and you know, I was looking at it. I was waiting at the airport to pick somebody up. And I was looking at it. And it looked like Las Vegas advertisement because <laughs> they had the, the ladies, you know, um, you know, in the bikini or whatever on the beach. And it's larger than life. And it, but it's for Tropea, you know, which is very touristy. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful as well. Um, but I can see, you know, the tourism is... Tourism is, is, is kind of getting a kickstart. Now, here in Kropany, again, it's exciting because we've got some people coming in that I'm working with that want to buy. We're fixing up. We're investing. They love to, to, to see the fresh new eyes. Someone come into town and say, no, you've got a great town here. You can do it, you know, because yeah. they've been sitting around here. You know, the old men are talking on the, on the park bench every day, all day for the past 15 years. Um, going to get their coffee and the same. So, and that's just natural because that happens anywhere in any town. But um, there is money coming in. There's announcements here that they did finish the road coming up. Um, they're working on the churches, their scaffold, they're being restored. Some beautiful churches, you know, frescoes and such. 11th century, you know, 12th century. Um, there's another thing where some family members donated to the city a, uh, a palazzo, like you, you know, it was, it was a family compound. Mm -hmm. They had the most money. It's on an arch, uh, kind of a hilltop. It's one of the higher points in the city. It looks very similar to what you got behind you there. The same wrought iron, the same small stones that went in. The, the, the somewhat, you know, um, you know, simplified architectural features but still, for that day and age, you know, wonderful. Um, that's supposed to get a refurbished. They want to do kind of a spa tourism center there. So yeah. there's some exciting things happening. We have a young mayor who's been really pushing things. We had a couple of young guys that went down to the beach, took over a place, refurbished it, brought a younger crowd in. So there's some really nice things happening. And those, you know, as usual, because I've been in community development uh, before, too, for a lot of my career. And you've got to go and work with the, the, the people that live there because they've got something at stake, you know. Oh, sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah, you've got to get what they call the stakeholders. You know? Right. So now you don't you don't have your citizenship yet. Are you are you going I, for it? No, I do not. I'm only here for the what they what the law allows. Three months in, three months out. Yeah. So you are, are you are you considering it? Because I'm, I'm very, in the process. Yeah. I'm in the no, process. No, no. Right yeah, I've got I've got everything. I've got all the documents. So now the next day, the gathering of the documents, almost two years, but, and, and I had it easy, but it's just a bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah. Getting, figuring out how you have to apply. Oh, that one there. Oh, that, this one there. Um, so I've got all the documents now. So the next thing is you got to get them all, whatever might need to be translated. Yep. Because my case is through the mother. So it has to go to the court. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But it's it's kind of a slam dunk because everything is in order, and you you have to get that information first. But no sense of going down the road collecting the documents if you if it's you know if you don't qualify. Right. So I found that out first, which was, and the way I qualified was uh, the great grandfather did not naturalize until well after almost twenty years after my grandmother was born in the United States. So um, maybe it was 18 years or something. So meaning my grandmother was born an Italian citizen. Really. Right. Yeah. Um, Same with my dad. Yeah. That's the way my father same thing. was. Okay. Which my mother was, which I was. But of course, back then, we're born in America. Fantastic. We, <laughs> no, we didn't ever think that, you know, no. to go and get Italian citizen. No. <laughs> Especially after the, 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 the patriarch there was denouncing the king of Italy, you know. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I will have that. Hopefully, I don't think it'll be this year. Obviously, it's, it's the end of the year. But by the time they, and of course, COVID put the whole thing on oh, the back yeah, really burner. So everything, yeah. it's been longer than probably usual. 
Um, but I really, I would recommend, you know, working with a lawyer, especially, you know, when you have a court case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. I interviewed, I interviewed uh, a couple okay. of attorneys and, and, uh, okay. you know, I asked one of them and he said, you, I'll do it. You just have to pay for the, the, the paperwork, you know, whatever the paperwork costs. So I'll take care of yeah. everything oh. else. So I, I got, fair. I really lucked out. And then I found out, yeah. uh, I, I, one of my cousins, uh, two of my cousins actually live in San Diego that I never knew, okay. Malo. And uh, yeah. one of them is an attorney at the council in, in Los Angeles. So oh. he said, he said, when the paperwork's done, call me. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. Oh, you, yeah. you, you're you lucky because you have the home there. So you could establish residence real easy. And Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've established a residence of the town, but it sort of expires every year. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. You it's have not, to renew it yeah. until you. Yeah. It's not permanent, um, but um, it, the, one of the things that sort of made it easy was when the great grandfather came, he was in Utica. He had his children in Utica. They died in Utica. They were married in Utica. My parents were born in Utica. You know, so every, oh, so everything was, was pretty yeah. much in the city of Utica, New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, so that, yeah, so that's good. Um, so um, if for people who, you know, are thinking about either you know looking or, or purchasing or um, yeah. What couple of pieces of advice would you give them to start out? Um, probably the first thing you know, um, you kind of you got to get your feet on the ground. I would say you know, do you want to be in the south of Italy? Do you want to be in the Tuscany region? You know. Um, you, you, I would think you have to kind of visit a little bit and get some of the, you know, the grounds, uh, you know, get your feet on the ground so that you get an idea. Oh, and of course, there's the reading, you know, and just the due diligence of what um, what the towns are up to. Um, oh, that's, yeah, good point. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if there's kind of a surge, like I think we're having here, like I said, we've got a couple people, other people buying. We've got um, some government um, funding. Oh, by the way, speaking of government funding, um, well, I could go on about my project, but that's another, I, mean, I can get to that. But we take uh, Italian language classes for free here. Oh, nice. We go oh. right to the school. It's kind of um, a continuing, edu occasion, uh, continuing education, adult education classes. They're funded, the teachers are there. They're funded, um, you know, by the school system and the government, I'm sure, public education. So, and of course, we walk to the school, it's like two blocks away. And, um, and a side note is that school is getting renovated and they're moving the school next door to my house. How do you like that? <laughs> because next door to my house is the old, well, it's a, it's a very old elementary school. And then it grew out and they made the other school probably in the 60s and it became like City Hall, you mm. know. And now since I moved here two years ago, they said, you know what? City Hall has grown. So they went to another building a few blocks away, refurbished it. So the building next to me, which used to be a school, then it was City Hall, has been empty, which has been nice because I got a lot of parking area. <laughs> but... Um, they just told us at the school uh, last week um, that they're going to renovate it. So they're going to come over here to this place next to us for the temporary setup. So now I just go right next door to the school. Um, but it, yeah, it's really, and it's wonderful because, and I had to take a picture the other day because my fiance had gone with the two friends to see another, they were up in Rome. They had come from America and, um, I said, nobody's going to believe this, but I'm the only student in this class today. And there's three Italian teachers speaking to you. <laughs> three beautiful women, too. How do you like that? So I, think, I mean, they, they have some um, people that have come from Ukraine, you know, because of the war, of course. They have other people that have come from Morocco. Or one of the young guys that came from Egypt. Um, so there are people that, under certain circumstances, end up near here or nearby. See, we're very lucky because the school is here in Crobany. Mm -hmm. and, and the teachers even come from Cantanzaro. You know, it's just half hour. But we're very lucky to have the, um, 
for the school year in Copenhagen because there's other people coming from other towns trying to get to here uh, to take the, the language. And they even, they, they'll teach them English too, some of the um, other people, because they might, they, whether they're from Egypt or Morocco, um, and like I said, Ukrainian. Um, we had people, other people from Africa, I think in Nigeria one. Um, but we're certainly the only Americans. And a lot of them are like, why are you here? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to take advantage of is free language classes. Oh, yeah, that's no, that's that's fabulous. That's really yeah. super to 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 have that. I mean, I'm I, I'm like you, you know. The parents, my parents spoke it. And, you know, they yeah. usually when they didn't want us to understand something, they would you know speak Italian and and uh, yeah. it's it's sad because you know other nationalities in the states when we were growing up had you yeah. know they had Hebrew school, they had Polish school. And the Italians right. didn't do anything like that, unfortunately, you know. I, I yeah, I mean, I, I did have it. I, you know, when I got to high school, I, I did take it. But, you know, it was conversational. And, you know, hey, I'm high school. It's like, well, I'm never going to use this. And I had other plans anyways. So I, I, it didn't sink in. Not much of it sank in. And a lot of what, what, what we would have learned probably, like you say, you know, where your parents came from. With dialect, yeah. Yeah, it, the, the the teachers that are teaching us, they're like, no, 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 no. That, um, yeah, but yeah. I, I found out when we were in Calabria um, that the Calabrian dialect is not anything like Italian. <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. Yeah, and, and, and I'll sit there and I'll like listen. Italian. No, I'll I'll sit there. I'll listen to a couple guys talking, or you know, and I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> uh, because I can listen to people, you know, talk, and I can pick out the words, but um, yeah, that's. There's a lot of uh, yeah, and then we there. we had uh, we had the uh, this little group that was entertaining us when we were there, and um, he sang this this song, um, "A Manja Grappa," uh, and uh, uh, Manja Grappa. Yeah, and uh, so uh, you know, I play guitar, so I said, "Can you send me the words? I'd like to learn how to to play it and sing it." And <laughs> He sent me the words in Calabrian, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Yeah, you're right. They, when they spell it out, it doesn't look oh. like uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look like yeah. anything. <laughs> I've seen some guys on Facebook. They 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 yeah. do the they do the dialect, of, and you can't copy and paste and translate it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I didn't even attempt it because I, I when I looked at, it, I said, "This isn't going to translate into anything." Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I have the music part down. I'm I'm I'm. Oh, I'm getting there with the words, but it's tough. Well, yeah, I, I love music. I've played music for years professionally. So, Dan, one other thing I wanted to ask you, if you if you know, um, yeah. is uh, we see a lot of places for auction. Is that safe? Yeah, yeah. I I got some personal experience with that. I I didn't um, put in any bids for auctions, but I did go to Sicily back in January with a fellow who he's an American, but he, he has his wife and kids up in Milan. And he does a lot of work with auctions. And we operate a um, Facebook page that has all the, uh, the, all the auction properties. He's got them all category categorized and it's a great tool to work from. Um, he ended up bidding on one in Sicily and he won it and he was, you know, surprised. Oh my goodness. Now what do I do now? And it was one of the one euro program houses, um, which usually bids up to maybe a few thousand dollars because there are people vying for it, mm -hmm. but it's a shell. I mean, it's just, it's right. just the walls and I don't think there's even a roof on it. So he's got a lot of work. To do. <laughs> um, and we looked at that. I went to Sicily with him and we looked at that. Another friend who I will see, in a couple of days, because he and he's in California, he bought one in the same town. This is called Sambuca, just like the drink. I like the drink, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's north of Shaka, a little bit north of Shaka. Um, and he bought one, but he and he started looking, and then he decided, you know what? I don't really want to get one that cheap. I'd rather spend a little bit more and just, you know, have more to it. You know, more walls, <laughs> a roof. You know, this this sort of thing. I mean, we are going to update it. We're going to put new electric in it. And he's an architect, so he's got other plans. It's oh, going to nice. be great. It's going to be really cool. Sambuca is a cool little town. It got a lot of um, publicity because Airbnb went into Sambuca and they talked with the town. And they said, look, you give us one of these houses, 
We're going to put 150, 200 grand into it. We're going to make it an Airbnb competition, and somebody's going to win it. And they have to promise um, three months in, three months out for a full year to host it. Mm -hmm. um, a young couple won it. I think they were from Sweden or something. It was a worldwide thing. It was, and we looked at it. It was finished when we were there back in January. And then after the year, I think Airbnb, the, the corporation, is giving it back to the town, and then they'll probably sell that, one, which is in beautiful shape. Um, that's finished. And then, but my buddy uh, Joe from California, um, which I will see in a couple of days, he went ahead and paid. Man, I don't know exactly. Maybe ten thousand. I, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure if I should say that much, but. It was more than, you know, a couple thousand. It was certainly more than the one euro idea. Now, it has to, you know, it, it's got some windows that could, you could probably use for a while, but we need updating later. Um, he gutted one of the bathrooms. And again, like I said, he's got some really wonderful ideas, but it's dry. You know, he's got, he's got a nice roof. He's got doors and <laughs> locks up and, you know, there's that. So, um, and I'm going to look at one this weekend in Sicily. And this woman... Um, also, it's on, it's it's an auction type look. Well, I go and I go before and give them a better look at it than what's on the auction paper. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll do a PowerPoint. I'll I'll send videos. I'll send photos, and I'll send some recommendations. Um, the, the the there is a you really need a lawyer. I feel because like you were saying before, before you buy, there's this. Um, I can't think of it. It's, it's very similar to the word succession, successioi, or something like that. And it's the idea that, oh, I'm the brother and I own the house and I'm going to sell it to you. Yeah, well, right. there's six other brothers that own it too. <laughs> so only a lawyer, I think, maybe a notario, but someone with legal, good legal experience can track that down. It's like getting a clear title in the state. Yeah, I was going to say almost like a title. Yeah. But that's, where the, that's where you run the risk. We have had no problems with that. But again, we use the lawyer to, to make sure that the person selling the house is the, is the you know, or let's put it this way, the people, whoever is selling the house, they're all signing off on it. No one's coming back later to say, you know, you know, I wasn't told or whatever. Um, so anyway, and we did that twice. We did that with the Bolino, the small one we have at the sea, and we did it, you know, in the bigger one we have up in the town. So there, that's the biggest risk, I would say. But when they say one euro, you're, you're, that's what you're getting. One euro and, uh, you know, in, in a shell usually. Or sometimes they're, they're in the one euro block of houses that are for sale. But the bid goes up, up, up very quickly because it's a yeah. decent house. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, right. still, but still, you're only talking maybe 25,000. Yeah, you know? no, right, right, yeah. right. But right. you're not going to get the one euro. Um, no, and that's still twenty five thousand for you right. Know, that's, that's yeah, good. you're still yeah. getting a great deal. Yeah, you're yeah. Gonna, so the so the next question is: Is that where you want to be? <laughs> right. It's right. location, location, location. It's the same thing. Where where do you want to be? We just you know, realized this was a gold mine because you know we've got the mountains. I love, I love the nature walks, the waterfalls, the Sila. It's got some of the freshest air, the cleanest air, the purest air in Europe. It's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we've got the sea. The Ionian Sea is right here. The Gulf of Squalachi. I mean, the squid that comes out of that sea is just, you know, it just came out <laughs> the morning before you ate it. Right. Night. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of, so anyways, um, I would say that's, you know, that's the, um, the, the real thing you have to look at is the succession, the people you're buying from, are they the only ones that need to be signing off? Right. Listen, Dan, this has been very uh interesting and educational and especially for anybody yeah. who's considering about you know either you know buying a place that's yeah. finished or thinking about getting something and and renovating it uh lots yeah. of yeah, great sure. information and uh okay, we'll be in good. touch um you know hopefully our okay. next trip we'll, we'll we'll meet up somewhere in uh calabria yeah yeah well i'd love that i'd love that yeah for sure there's so many nice places to visit Absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, good restaurants to visit too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again. Okay, Bob. Thank you. Bye.